Further ado, ladies and gentlemen, one of the um, one of the virtual conference topics is going to be talking about microRNA, the importance of you know those labs that you get and those tumor markers that the doctors are looking at, and what does all what does all this data mean, you know, from uh, a survivor standpoint and from uh, the other side for the for the uh, medical professionals. Well, we've got the gentleman that's going to be doing that conference uh, discussion here with us from the University of Texas Southwestern. He's a urological cancer surgeon who focuses on testicular cancer. Please welcome uh, here on our Facebook Live for TCAF, uh, Dr. Uh, Bagrodia. Hey, Dr. Bagrodia, how are you? Hey, BJ, I'm, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Really looking excited, uh, looking forward to the program today and you know this week. Absolutely. So Dr. B, listen, what are you going to be talking about? Yeah, so my, uh, my part of the conference is going to focus on microRNAs. And, um, and of course, you survivors and caregivers are, are used to going in and getting your routine blood draws, your AFP, your HCG. And really, there's been a tremendous body of work over the last 10 years that have identified um, microRNAs that are measurable in the blood. And I'll focus on microRNA 371. And suffice to say that this is a new biomarker that's more sensitive than our conventional tumor markers. They're present in seminomas and non-seminomas. And over the course of my talks, I, I think I'm gonna be able to demonstrate to you that there is a growing body of evidence that these microRNAs are gonna be critical at diagnosis before orchiectomy, helping decide who's got residual disease after their orchiectomy, helping mm -hmm. to decide who's responding to chemotherapy or radiotherapy, or if you've received surgery or PLND who may be cured or have residual cancer. So really across disease states, I think these microRNAs are really poised to radically change the way that patients are diagnosed, treated, and surveyed. And, um, and I, I would go as far to say that this could really dramatically decrease the number of CT scans, um, imaging, and so forth required moving forward. So we're in the early phases of this super exciting time in testis cancer. I would say one of the major breakthroughs that, that we've honestly seen in the last 40, 50 years since the um, advent of, you know, highly effective platinum-based therapies. That is awesome. Dr. beck Rodeo, why do you think it's so important? Why, why would you suggest to your patients and, you know, to your friends and family who you might have had to deal with this uh, diagnosis, why do you think it's so important that they would come to this conference? Absolutely. I mean, these are things that are probably going to impact you on a very granular level. You know, if we can save you CT scans and the radiation, if we can help you, um, you know, just kind of understanding what the state of the art is, you know, very narrowly in the microRNA world, this is going to be a game changer. You should know about it. But, but there's really so much that goes on from a quality of life perspective, long-term follow-up, side effects of orchiectomy, side effects of chemo, side effects of radiation, and, you know, just go, being a cancer survivor at a relatively young age, just to, you know, go into this relatively rare cancer, knowing you're not alone, knowing what the whole 360 degree experience looks like, right. whether it's of historic interest or something that you're going through real time. I think just to kind of know what, what the absolute best options are, um, you know, at, at this point would, would be tremendous. And, and just to feel that community. We have an event here in Dallas annually. I love it. We get together, we do barbecue and beers and, um, you know, it's just, it's just a really nice event. Exactly. You know, and, and that's really the whole reason why we at TCAF, we, we've always, we love to bring people together, not just on a survivor standpoint, but we want to connect these medical providers with patients, with, you know, sur survivors, with caregivers to be uh, in the know of what's happening out there and continue to Get the education because listen, you you could just you know get the diagnosis and do one you know go deal with your surgery or whatever it is. But isn't it great to have all of the information and kind of see that we're on the cutting edge and see what else is out there and get that important information out? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. Well, Dr. Bagrodia, we're looking forward to hearing you at the Virtual Testicular Cancer Conference, and thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Absolutely. See, Dr. Bagrodia, awesome guy. By the way, not only is he going to be talking about his uh, topic there, but he'll be there throughout the entire conference and your opportunity to ask him questions as well as all of the other medical professionals that'll be with us at the Virtual Testicular Cancer Conference. Again, uh, that's January 27th to 28th. You can check out testiscancer.org. It's 8 to 10 p.m. We're talking a two-hour block in the evening after you're 
uh, kids are asleep. Uh, after uh, you get home from work, hopefully you have the opportunity to come and join us. Um, and again, uh, we're asking $20 donations to be able to cover the fee for uh, you know, setting up our, our the Zoom, you know, where there was fees there, uh, having uh, put together all of the, the media for this. But if you can't afford it, we can help you out. And I'll let you know here towards the end of the Facebook Live what you can do, because we want to get everyone here. So if you know a survivor, if you know a caregiver, even if you know a, a medical professional who uh, is, is go maybe they're going into urology, maybe they're into oncology, uh, maybe they're in medical school and they just want to learn it and, and get some information uh, about what's happening out there. Invite them to this. It's such an important cause and what a great opportunity in light of what's happening in the world right now to be able to bring people together uh, to connect on such an important topic. Uh, we have another presenter who's going to be at the Virtual Testicular Cancer Conference uh, later this week. And I want to invite him to come up and talk about what he'll be doing. Uh, you might know him from the Indiana University School of Medicine. Uh, he worked a lot with, uh, with our, with our uh, good friend, Dr. Einhorn, who has been at you know, many of our other events. Uh, he'll be speaking on trying to avoid chemotherapy and radiation uh, when it's appropriate. Uh, he's a urologic cancer surgeon as well. Please welcome Dr. Clint Carey. Hey, Dr. Carey. Hey, BJ. How's it going? Thanks for having me. And uh, I can't wait to uh, have a little conversation here with you. Yeah. So why is it so important that you were like, hey, this is what I want to talk about because I love this. First of all, what are you talking about and why is it so important to you? Yeah. So like you alluded to, so there, there are certainly patients that um, have had their testicular cancer spread out of the testicle up into the retroperitoneal lymph nodes. Uh, and they um, potentially may need this retroperitoneal lymph node dissection or better known as RPLND. Uh, and um, there are certainly times when chemotherapy and radiation therapy may be appropriate, but uh, I think it's important to know there, there are other times when you can avoid that. And so um, that, that is something I think that I really want to highlight uh, for, for all the patients and survivors that are going to be here uh, to understand when it's appropriate to have surgery and, and perhaps even when it's appropriate to have chemotherapy um, and understand, um, you know, why there may be some misinformation out on the internet. Uh, there's certainly a lot right. of good information out there, um, but uh, I get asked frequently about um, a lot of misinformation when I see patients in the clinic. And I think uh, I want to hit on that as well, as far as why does that happen? Um, and a lot of it is uh, because of the somewhat rarity of the disease and, and also somewhat uh, uh, rarity of needing this operation. So um, it's, it's not a, a lot of urologists across the country that have a vast experience with it. Um, and so I'm gonna highlight some of that during the talk as well. Awesome. Dr. Kerry, before I go any further, I wanna make sure that I tell you that Adrian Randall says hello, watching on Facebook Live and they say that you are the best and I know that you are. <laughs> Well, thank you for that. I, I know her quite well. So uh, hello to her and hope our night is going well. Dr. Kerry, thank you so much for your time. Really looking forward to hearing what you got to say. And uh, what would you say real quick to uh, maybe your future patients that are out there, uh, you know, patients of other providers out there who might be thinking, all right, maybe I should go to this conference, but I'm not quite sure. What's the, what's the nail here that's going to get them in? Well, I, I would say, you know, I, I see testis cancer patients uh, almost every day. And despite all of that and the experience that comes with that and everyone's individual uh, cases, uh, I'll tell you that I learn, I've been coming to this meeting um, for about three or four years now. And uh, I learn something every time I come. I learn something from all the survivors that are coming, their family members that are there when we have conversations, either in the small group discussions or just uh, in, in small chats. And so uh, I, I feel like if I can learn something coming to this meeting, uh, certainly everyone else can. And so I think that's an exciting uh, thing for people. It's, it's uh, fun to learn stuff outside of the, the clinic perspective, right. or the hospital perspective, uh, mm -hmm. to learn those little nuances. Uh, and I, honestly, I think it's made me a better um, uh, physician and, and caring for people, knowing uh, some of this information that happens outside the clinic. So I think uh, sharing that information and coming and seeing what's available, uh, I think is important for everyone. You heard it right here, Dr. Carey. I'm taking that clip. I'm putting it on the TCAF testimonials page. We really appreciate your support, Doc. Absolutely.
We'll see you soon. That was Dr. Kerry, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to talk to Dr. Kerry, if you want to talk to any of the providers that are going to be uh, here at the virtual testicular cancer conference next week, you should uh, check out testiscancer.org, RSVP to come and join us, and we will hook you up. Uh, Dr. Kerry, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks a lot.